Well, good evening, everybody. Once again, for those that have just joined us, this is another MLA teacher refresh course. I am not Cassandra Woodland. In fact, I am Carson uh, calling in from the MLA offices here in the United States. And my colleague, Josh Williams, is with us over in our Italian offices. And it's a pleasure to join you once again for another great teacher refresh course. Um, that was planned by our colleague Cassandra Woodland using devices in the classroom and mm. I think we're about one minute away from getting started. What do you think Josh? Yeah I think so. Just a last reminder if you've got Kahoot on your phone or device I would encourage you to keep that at hand. Um, if you don't go to the app store or the play store and see if you can download it. It's free at least the the basic part of it is free and to be honest the basic part's really all you need. Okay, um, and uh, we'll be doing a quiz later in the thing that you that we'll send you the link for, and you can use in your own lessons. Okay, later. All right. Well, it is just a few minutes after the hour. It's a beautiful Thursday here. I thank you all for taking some time out of your week to join us once again for MLA's free teacher refresh courses that we've been offering now for quite some time. Um, just to give some, some general basis before I turn it over to my colleague, Josh, don't forget that we will send out certificates at the end of our program, as well as teacher handouts um, so that you guys can have the links and things to be able to use these lessons. Um, on your own. So without further ado, I'll turn it over to our own Director of Studies in our Italian offices, Josh Williams. Okay, hi everyone, welcome back. I think this is our, a surprise to see today, I think it's our 10th um, refresher course that we've done since we started them in September. Okay, um, just before we start, as I've been reminding some people, I just want to bring up the fact that uh, we are doing a, a Kahoot quiz later, okay? Um, I'll put in the uh, details, I'll just share my screen for a moment on the other browser, okay? So we are going to be using a Kahoot a little bit later, okay? This Kahoot number, if you um, want to put it in, is 15678751, okay? Um, I'll put that also in the chat, okay? If I can, hang on, I think I can. Hi, Roberto from uh, Luzerne. Nice to see you again. Okay. So you've got in the quiz, uh, that's the Kahoot uh, link. But if you have Kahoot, the app, then just open it up at, uh, and uh, you can even uh, just put in that code. Okay. I'll tell you it later, but you're welcome to register when you like. Okay. And uh, we'll start that in about 20 minutes. Okay. Looks like some people are already logging in there. Okay. Um, anyway, I'll stop that now, okay, and uh, I'll give you that a bit later as well, okay, but I'll just go back to sharing my screen on the, oh, one second, okay, so we're going to be talking about, uh, well, sorry, first of all, as Carsten said before, we do have a certificate of participation and a webinar handout. Um, Every week we have a couple of people for some reason or another don't receive it, but as long as you email us at formazione at mlaworld.com, you'll receive it very soon after. Okay? I'm sorry if you don't receive it. Okay, Please remember that all the important information from the webinar, plus some useful links and some extra things, particularly worksheets and the link for the uh, uh, Kahoot quiz, will be in that. So don't worry, we're not sending you the slides, but we're sending you everything that's in the slides. Okay. Um, going on to the topic of the webinar, okay, I think it's important. Uh, a few things uh, we might be a bit worried about when we get people, uh, stu encourage students to use smartphones or devices. Okay. I think we generally, as teachers, we see them as distractions. Okay. I mean, how is it that we can expect uh, students to stay focused on the task at hand when they could be sending messages, watching TikToks, or who knows what else? Okay? Um, I mean, often we think, you know, isn't it possible that the classroom can be the one area in which we can have like a mobile free zone? You know, when they're coming to school, when they're going back home, when they're at home, when they're with their friends, they're always online. Okay. Why can't we just make the classroom a, a device-free zone, okay? Now, 
I admit these are good points, okay? And it is a really good idea to let students have a bit of freedom from their devices, even if they don't want to have it, okay? Um, but I think sometimes using it as a reward, letting them discover new, new ways of using technology in English can be a great motivating tool, okay? And it also shows them how much more there is on the web that's not in Italian. Okay. I mean, everyone I'm sure participating in the webinar is well aware of this. But, you know, the fact is that a lot of these students are going to be looking at a lot of the things in Italian. If you manage to uh, push them into areas that they haven't seen before, okay, then uh, it's going to really expose themselves, expose them to English. Okay. Just some objectives as we always start. Okay. At the end of this session, uh, all of you should be able to uh, plan some lessons involving the use of devices, should be able to exploit your students' ability to use devices in lessons, both in the classroom and during online lessons, okay? And uh, to use technology to adapt traditional lessons into a new approach, okay? I think, uh, I, you know, we are, we're all hoping that we're moving out of online lessons um, into back into the class but who knows, okay? And I think it's always good to have some tricks up your sleeves, okay? When people are using devices anyway, why not, you know, exploit them to the full? But even in the class, I think uh, things we've learned during the pandemic can be uh, still used in face-to-face -face teaching. Okay? okay, devices, how to use them, okay? Um, tell us in the chat, okay, apart from when you were working online, in distance, have you ever used devices like smartphones and tablets in the classroom? Okay, if you have, tell us in the chat. Okay, um, so please let that go. Okay, um, please put them in and just tell me how you do it. Okay, um, someone asked for the code again. Okay, the Kahoot code is that one there. If you want to just put in those last numbers one, five, six, seven, eight, seven, five. Okay. Online dictionary is a really good way, okay? Very good, okay? Um, online dictionaries are really great resources. Instead of carrying something around, I have a little app that translates from Italian to English or even the Oxford Dictionary app. Okay, that, Gosh, uh, I think I would be more impressed if there was a teacher who did not use uh, phones in the classrooms, you know, at this yeah, time. Exactly. So I think that'd be even more unique. Yep, okay. So people are saying also they've used Kahoot, okay? Good, I'm, I'm sure you have. I just thought uh, there might be a few people out there that haven't or that are not so sure how to use it or how easy it is, okay? Um, also, I thought it might be good that we can actually plan something that you might use, okay? Looking for new vocabulary, okay? Watch videos, yeah, that's what the students are doing in class, I'm sure, okay? But yeah, I think, as you'll see, uh, I'm sure you've seen in the other nine webinars we've had, uh, the ones back with Sean um, and some other people, we generally have been exploring this idea of using devices. You know, whether it's for speaking, we talked about you comparing images, okay? we talked about uh, watching uh, videos in the music one last week. All of these things can be done by devices. Okay? Okay, I'll move on from that. Okay. Um, Josh, can I ask one question of the uh, of the audience? I have a bit of trivia before we move on. Is that okay? Please, please. So, in the in the chat box, if you can try to answer this question for me, tell me when do you think the Apple iPhone was first invented? Go ahead and put a put a guess of the year. When do you think the Apple iPhone was first invented? Remember Steve Jobs, famous CEO of Apple, brilliant mind invented the iPhone in what year? Go ahead and just type some guesses into the uh, the chat box. Let's see if we can get somebody who can get it on the nose or get it close. What do we think? Mm. What year was the Apple iPhone first invented? Okay, we have the 70s, we have 2008, 20 years ago, question mark, couple 2007s, 1999. You know, a lot of, people lot of good Googling questions. This. No Googling this. 
1995, a lot of people in the 90s, more than 20 years ago. You know, we think that that smartphones have been with us for such a long time because they're part of our everyday lives. But the correct answer to that question is the first edition of Apple iPhone was released by Apple back in 2007. Okay, so 2007, congratulations, people that got that right. What that means is that the people who are starting their first years of high school, years nine and even years 10, when they've been born, they've always had the presence of smartphones in their lives. They've never known a world without technology, right? So we come from different generations. Even myself and Josh, you know, we all have different generations and different adaption to technology. But the students who you are teaching today have been born with not a rattle in their hand, but rather an iPhone, you know, in their hand. And that's why this topic today is so important. So thanks for indulging me, Josh, in a bit of trivia and, and we can carry on. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, someone asked in the Q&A also whether it, uh, the, the app is Cocoon, no, it's Kahoot. I just put in the uh, um, chat again, the, the, the link to the, the online quiz. But again, you can download an app or you can even just go to the website. You don't even need the app, okay? Um, anyway, uh, we're going to be looking at a task-based learning approach to the use of devices. On the next slide, we'll go through a bit of ta task-based learning, okay? Um, what is task-based learning? Now, task-based learning requires uh, students to complete a task in order to provide them with the opportunity to interact in English. So. It's an approach that we generally use in MLA, okay? um, particularly in our centers, but also in our online lessons. Okay? Generally, what it means is we give them something to do, and by doing that task in English, they're learning new vocabulary, either from other students or from the things they're interacting with, and they actually get to use their English. Okay? I think it's as a teacher, it's a really great way um, to, to get students to, to use their uh, implicit knowledge. Obviously, there's a time for you to give them grammar lessons, to give them vocabulary lessons, okay, to give them listening, etc. But these are sort of the cherry on top that really gets them to exploit what they know. Okay? Um, as I said, we use it, and uh, anyone who's been in any of our centres will know that the task time books are really popular with students. And uh, they really like to, a lot of them involve researching the information on their devices. Um, in fact, when I worked on the cruise, the English on board program last summer, we actually had all the task time books on, the, on devices, okay? And the students filled them in and it, it worked fantastic. I'm not even sure we might even continue with that next year, okay? Next summer. Anyway, Going back, we, um, in 2020, MLA found itself in a difficult situation. Okay? Um, with the pandemic, there was no way we could run summer schools in the UK, Ireland, or the USA like we normally do when international travel was impossible. Okay? On the right, you can see the, the beach and you can see a picture of uh, Britain in summer, okay? the beautiful summer day in uh, London there. Okay? Um, Students had been stuck at home and their summer trips abroad had all been cancelled, okay? We were wondering, particularly Carson was wondering, how we could run a summer school safely at the height of a pandemic, okay? We came up with a solution, okay? One of them was, okay, we organised um, some online classes. It was basically an online summer school, okay, um, where students could do online classes and they could uh, join. One part of them was a virtual online tour. And this is what we're going to be looking at now, okay? Virtual tours are really great. They're generally free, okay? You can step into a place. We have some examples here um, of the uh, Shakespeare's Globe, where if everyone's probably taught people about uh, the, the Shakespearean theatre, the Elizabethan theatre and the way it was set up and how that influences the plays themselves, okay? you can actually tour around that recreation. Okay? Another one at the bottom there is the Robben Island Prison Tour, which is uh, where uh, Nelson Mandela spent his uh, years, I think, I don't know how long it was, 40 years or something like that, okay? 
in prison, okay? And you actually get shown around by people who are now guides but were prisoners back in the day, often political prisoners under apartheid, okay? Really great things for um, the civics lessons you give or literature, okay? Or, as we're going to see in a moment, just to give them an opportunity to see if they can use English in real life. And as they're virtual tours, they really let a student be a tourist from the safety of their own, well, from their classroom, from their own home, okay? As a teacher, you can require these students to navigate themselves around these sites, okay, in order to find information, listen to speakers and research more, okay? Um, almost any city that people would like to visit or any landmark, okay, you're going to find probably more than one virtual tour related to these, okay? One that uh, we had in, I worked during that uh, virtual summer school, and one that I was really fascinated by was David Attenborough's Great Barrier Reef. Okay? It's enormous. Okay? I don't think I've even seen the tip of it. Okay? Um, it's, it's got hundreds of pages, all interactive things. Sometimes you're watching videos. Sometimes you actually have to move things around. It's a great way of learning about the environment narrated by um, one of the most iconic uh, people in Britain, okay, David Attenborough, an okay, um, uh, uh, iconic voice for narrating uh, a lot of these uh, nature documentaries. Okay. If you gave students that link and required them to find out some information, to be honest, we often use it just by saying, you know, on this page, find a couple of pieces of information and share them. Okay, with your with your partner, okay? it was really interesting, and uh, it's, it gives a good way of interacting with uh, scientific English, environmental English, okay? uh, really great ways. Okay? Uh, another one that we're going to look at in a second is the New York virtual tour. Okay, if you go on your device, um, it might be if you've got a phone at hand. You could put in this one. Even if you uh, Google you visit NYC, you'll probably find it. Okay. Um, type the address into the browser of your phone or even just, as I said, Google you visit and NYC. Okay. There is a short video at the beginning. Actually, I'll show you. I'll share my screen on this a little. Okay. Um, just change the share. Okay. If I go to a moment, you'll see you can go through different parts of New York. Okay, Statue of Liberty. Okay, you can navigate around and generally down in this corner. So let me move this. Okay, you have a person that comes up. Otherwise, you can read the information here. Okay, there's also ability to click up and you can find more information or zoom in to certain parts, okay? And then you can move through other places. Occasionally this screen comes up, don't worry about it, okay? Again, more information here, that can be done as a listening also. Okay? Located off the southern tip. Um, just going back, I'll let you navigate yourselves to this, okay? But I'll go back to the slideshow because I have a couple of questions for you. See if anyone can get these in and put them in the chat, okay? So see if you can answer these questions. And this is from that site, not from uh, Wikipedia or by Googling these questions. How many people visit the Statue of Liberty every year? That's on the Statue of Liberty page. Madison Square Garden is the first, the second or the third busiest music arena in the world. And when was Brooklyn Bridge completed? Okay. I'll give you a moment to have a look at those. And uh, if you can find any of those, put them in the chat. Okay. So I put the link to the you visit inside of the chat, Josh. And, and while the teachers are taking a look for some of these answers, let's just talk a little bit about, you know, virtual tours and, and uh, you know, what happened in the pandemic. We often talk about the negative aspects of what the pandemic has done and caused us. But, you know, one of the positive things that I've taken away from the past two years has been 
uh, the embracing of technology and all of these companies, all of the museums around the world, a lot of zoos, a lot of cities, attractions, they all created these beautiful virtual tours that allowed us to be able to still see the world uh, even when we were in lockdowns, you know, during that difficult period of our times. And those resources still exist today. So being able to embrace those now and develop them into um, our teaching classrooms is gonna be really important. And things like looking at the, the plaques, you know, that you see, you know, in the virtual tours and doing sight reading exercises. And uh, we like to turn virtual tours into scavenger hunts, you know, letting kids be able to check on those. Those are some of the benefits. We often talk about the negatives of, of the pandemic, but, you know, the, the embracing of technology and the resources that we now have as educators to bring uh, the world closer to our students has been something that I think we need to look back upon and, and really be grateful for. Yeah, I think, um, you know, I mean, we were very lucky that, I mean, I don't want to say we're lucky about the pandemic, but we were very lucky it happened when we were all connected, okay? Imagine without Zoom or Meet or whatever you were using, okay? And we've got a couple of great answers coming into the uh, to the chat now. So some people that did some really quick work and and uh, visited those virtual tours there from you visit. So. Uh, we've got the 8 million, which is the answer to question number one. How many people visit the Statue of Liberty every year? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure that's what I had, okay, but it could be true, okay? My, we also have an answer coming in as 4.5 million people. I had um, the information on the page, okay, seemed to indicate is what someone just said, Gaetano said, uh, nearly 4 million, okay? Mm -hmm. So close 4 million, to 4 million people. Okay? Yep. Um, for the information about uh, Madison Square Garden, I think someone had it there. It's actually the third busiest, okay? I don't know what the first and second are, okay? And Brooklyn Bridge was completed in there. Someone had it, okay, Monica, maybe someone earlier, but Monica certainly had it in uh, 1883, okay? Yeah, Paula also had it too. Paula did a great job up there. She had it in quick. Okay. Great job. Okay. Rosanna too, okay? Um, in the uh, handout, there is attached a uh, worksheet with a lot more information, a question for each of these uh, places you visit on the tour. So one, a question for Ellis Island, South Street Seaport. Some of these things are information that you have to read. Some of these things are information you have to find. There's even a question. Um, uh, in fact, I'll show you, okay. Um, if we go to the next page, okay, I've made this and put it in the, uh, the, the, the handout, okay, so you have these questions here, okay, for example, in Times Square, name five musicals that you can see advertised, okay, um, Top of the Rock, where is it located, um, in uh, the Empire State Building, you can actually see an animal climbing the building, and why do you think this is? Okay, um, this is a sort of a trick question. Okay, students might not be aware, although quite possibly there's a film made not so long ago that probably lets students understand. Okay. Does anyone want to guess what that animal might be? Okay. I'll leave that there. And if anyone uh, thinks of what the animal it's I think it's not a real animal. Yeah, okay, yes, Katarina got it. It's King Kong. Okay. Okay. Um, by the way, someone said some students don't have internet. This is true, but a lot of these things you can, it doesn't really matter if you share devices, okay? You can put two students. Uh, I'm pretty sure in most classrooms, uh, at least one in two people will have internet. I don't think it's really a problem to put two students together on one device. In fact, given that these are task-based learning activities, I think it's often best in a group, okay? So, you know, two people, there's no need for them to use two devices. Okay? Anyway, moving on. Um, here we have the Kahoot. Okay? So if you want to um, bring that up again, okay, I'll put in the chat again the Kahoot. Okay? Now, um, I think it's probably best that I just demonstrate it. Okay? But basically, you'll need to pick play at the top of the page. Okay? Choose either classic mode for single students or team versus team. For us today, since we're all in our own houses, 
okay? Uh, it would be better to do classic mode, okay? It gives you a pin number, which you type into the phone. That's the pin number that I gave at the beginning and I'll give you again. Add your name and then we get ready to play. Now, you can make your own quizzes, but there's a thousands, hundreds of thousands, I imagine, on the Kahoot website that you can just, as long as someone has shared it, it's there. So you can search for things. Our, um, my colleague, uh, Cassandra, made this English weather idioms one, okay? but there's certainly other ones that you can find. Okay? And in fact, this wasn't the only English weather, weather idioms even on Kahoot. So you can find idioms for everything. You can find things about grammar. You can find things about history or any topic, really. Be a little careful because they are made by people like you and me. And so, you know, not all the information is always perfect, okay? I'm going to switch the share to the Kahoot, okay? So let me just put this back on. Hang on. I'm sorry. Looking at the wrong one. Okay. So if you can see the pin there, you need to put it into your device. Some people are already putting it on, okay? I'll give you a minute or two just to put that in, okay? And then we'll start playing, okay? Feel free, however, if you don't have a boot or you're having a problem connecting, you can always uh, put the answers in the chat. And I think Carson can probably be our, um, my, my lovely assistant, okay? Absolutely. Okay. And we're just going to put the pin back in there. But if you just click on the link, it's there. But it's 1567875. That's 1567875 is just the pin number if you need that to log in. Well, it's going to be a good game today. We've got a lot of participants. Mm. As I said, I must give credit to Cassandra for this one. Hey, she spent a lot of time making this one. I think you'll learn some new idioms and uh, or show off your knowledge of ones you already know. Okay. okay, I'll give you maybe another 20 seconds. Okay, and we'll start going. And Josh has generally offered a prize. He says that uh, if you win today's Kahoot, you're going to be the first one to receive the handouts and the certificate from today's webinar. So he's going to make sure that you personally receive those documents himself. So congratulations to the winner of Kahoot. Okay, I'll give you another 10 seconds and then we'll start. But remember, if you don't make it in time, feel free to just put your answers uh, in, the, in, the, in the chat. Okay? All right, looking good, here we go. Okay, let's start. Okay, don't worry about this. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, what does it's raining cats and dogs mean? Okay, does it mean it's sunny? Does it mean it's raining lightly, it's raining heavily, or it's snowing? Okay, now you just need to click on that symbol on your screen. Okay, or if you want, we can call them. Uh, there we go. Okay. Oh, everyone had that. Okay. No losers at all in that one. Okay. Very good. Susie was the best with the reaction time, I think. Okay. Good job, Susie. Okay. Second question. What does snowed under mean? Okay. Mm. Does it mean I'm free all day? I have too much to do? It's snowing a lot or it's sunny? Now, if you heard me when you logged on today, I was saying that we're expecting a big snowstorm here in the U.S. this weekend. So don't let that distract you from the correct answer, though. Okay. Very good. I have too much to do. Okay. Yeah. Uh, most people got that, okay. but a little bit harder. Okay. Remember in the handout, we will share this one. Yeah. So you will have the link for this. Okay. What does I'm on cloud nine mean? I'm unhappy, I'm blissfully happy, I'm sad, or I'm tired. 
Cloud nine, a good place to be. Don't give away the answer. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> Very good. Okay, blissfully happy. Most people got that one too. Well, we've got some good participants on this quiz. I should have expected it. I should have made it harder. A couple of people are getting the right answers too that are just joining us on the chat, and that's okay. If you don't have a chance to be on Kahoot, go ahead and type your answers also uh, yeah. into the um, uh, into the chat box. Okay, next one. What does chasing rainbows mean? Setting an impossible goal, looking for a rainbow, trying to catch a rainbow, or searching for gold. Chasing rainbows. And there's some song, isn't it? Chasing rainbows. I don't know. Or that chasing wa don't go chasing waterfalls. Is that's it, it. That's it. Yeah. Sorry. Another type of uh, water. Okay. Setting an impossible goal. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Patricia, four in a row. Well done. All right. Very good. What does a storm in a teacup mean? Okay. <laughs> this is a great one. The tea is too hot to exaggerate everything. The teacup is empty or the tea is spilt. I really love this idiom and I wish that it meant that the tea is too hot because I just think <laughs> that would be a fun thing to say when my tea is too hot. Oh, wow. Very good. Idiom. Again, 29 correct there. Okay. Patricia is still up there on five correct answers in a row. She's coming for cats. Let's see if cats, we can turn out. Okay. That's maybe a bit faster reaction time, but Patricia is still going well with five in a row. Okay. What does quick as lightning mean? Okay. Have a temper, to get angry, to be very fast, or to be asleep? There we go. I think some might even say that cats is <laughs> quick as lightning. Yeah. Couple of good answers coming into the chat too. Thanks for playing along for those that weren't able to get onto the Kahoot today. I like other people putting in the chat also some good uh, uh, other definitions. Okay, it's very good. Yeah, to be very fast. Yep. Okay. Oh, ten players are on the streak as well. Okay. There we go. Cats are still holding on to the lead. Number seven. What does under the weather mean? Here's a bit more difficult. Does it mean you're sad? Does it mean you're rained on? Does it mean you're grumpy? Or does it mean you feel ill? You know, Josh, which is fun is I think that often as teachers, our students always get to have the fun. It's so nice to change it around and let the, the teachers now have to play Kahoot and have a little bit of fun today. This is fun. True, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, again, this was a bit of a hard one to feel ill. I guess this is one that doesn't necessarily, um, not really represented by the actual words. Uh, yeah, we often say I'm feeling a bit under the weather. It usually means to feel a little ill. Uh, yeah, just a little runny nose maybe or a small cough. That would be yeah, under the weather. maybe sort of the, the, the sickness that maybe just a bit of rest will, will mend. Okay. okay. Oh, that filtered out a lot of people. Okay. And here we go. We have a new leader. With, uh, it's always class. fun when you give a difficult question and see all the scores go up and down. Okay. Okay, question eight. What does to weather a storm mean? Okay. Have an argument, survive a dangerous situation, to be caught in a storm, or to see a problem? I can see why students have a good time with uh, Kahoot. It's a lot of fun. Okay, another one where it sounded like it meant have an argument, but it actually means survive a dangerous situation. Okay? You weather a storm, it generally means you uh, go through this storm being a difficult situation. To weather something often means to resist it. Okay? Right. 
By the way, the great thing about this, as opposed to other quizzes, is that it's a combination of the speed and the accuracy, which is obviously a really important thing when uh, students' knowledge of English, okay? And don't forget to just a reminder to everybody, we're gonna send the link to this specific Kahoot quiz as part of the handouts for this. So you'll be able to use this with your students in the lessons. I yeah. think we have two more questions. Yes, okay. Okay, save something for a rainy day. What does it mean? An activity to do on a rainy day, an activity not to do on a rainy day, to speak about it on a rainy day or to keep for the bad times. I'll tell you, some of our people on the chat are answering really quick. They're doing great. Oh, almost everyone got that one correct. Good one, okay. Bit of a trick there that the rainy rain doesn't really have anything to do with it. Okay. Okay. Close is up there. Okay. Nine in a row. Wow. Okay. Here we go. See if you can make it 10. What does under a cloud mean? Okay. Suspected of having done something wrong, to be sad, to be ill, to believe something bad will happen. Okay. This one's a difficult one, I think. This is going to really shake up the leaderboard. I, I good, good. If you ever make these yourself, it's really good to put in someone that a distractor, okay? Suspected of having something, ah. have done something wrong. So if I say he's under a cloud, it generally means eh, there's a little bad thing about his reputation. So a little suspicious, maybe. Yeah, yeah, you could say he left under a cloud, okay, in the sense that maybe he was accused of something, okay? All right, so let's see what happened here okay. at the end. Third Susie. place, Susie. Okay. Good job, Susie. Second place, Cat oh, okay. sliding into second. And that means that our first place winner today. Close, okay. Close, nice job. That okay. was a lot of fun. Okay. And congratulations also to Rosie and me, who were the uh, uh, runners up today. Okay. I'll Good job. That. Okay, on, and I'll just go back to the course. Okay. Okay, sorry, one moment. Uh, okay, just going back. Okay, I think everyone's seen how um, these can be really fun. As I said, uh, we've made one for you. They're really instinctively easy to make. Okay, you can put in media there, you can cut and paste things. It's a little bit like making PowerPoint, but actually easier. Right. You know, students love cahoots. And I think sometimes maybe using Kahoot as the reward is also something fun. You know, maybe it's the Friday activity towards the end of the week, you know, something that the students have to look forward to. So maybe, you know, even incorporating once a week, uh, even as a recap. So imagine using it as something to kind of bring back the topics that you've covered all week long and then do this fun activity um, as the recap at the end of the week, right before the students go away for the weekend and we start to lose their attention. I think that can be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think we've often used it in that way. You know, whether you've done something, uh, you know, when students are learning, I was even doing a lesson with students today about Beowulf and the Anglo-Saxon invasion. Now, it's hard to grab their attention, but if you give them a Kahoot quiz at the end of the week with a couple of these um, questions, it's really going to grab their ideas. Okay, grab their attention, okay, and also let you know who's paying attention and who's not, okay. Another thing that um, Cassandra made for us, okay, is a mobile treasure hunt. So these uh, worksheets will be in the handout, okay. Basically, you've got some things about uh, Britain, okay, and Ireland, and uh, basically put students in groups they, find, they need to find three facts about each place, okay? Now, they can't use Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a little bit easy, okay? So they need to find information on this, okay? It doesn't matter what the facts are, as long as they are facts from a website. They've got to write what the website is, okay? The, interest, the objective is to find the most interesting facts, okay? The most interesting facts gets the most points. So one for slightly interesting, five for something maybe you didn't know at all. Okay? And the group with the most points wins. Okay? Those, uh, it's a double page thing, so you could even double side it. Okay? 
Um, obviously, you could also share it even as a um, uh, something on the front of the class, you know, on the limb, uh, the interactive whiteboard. Okay? There's a lot of rules here. I'm not going to go through them one by one, okay? but they are on the handout. Okay? Just some sort of things to make it a little bit more interesting, a little bit uh, to run the... Um, uh, to run it a bit better, okay? So there can be some things, for example, uh, the last the last questions, they get more points, okay? Uh, if they use an Italian uh, site, they lose points, okay? Anyway, just rounding up, okay? Just some conclusions, I think. Uh, I think you'll see, and I think we've proved that Devices really let the let students interact with the most accessible source of English language in the world, the internet. Okay? It would really be a shame not to use them. Let's say occasionally, not all the time, but use them in class. Okay. As Carson was saying, like device time could be used as a reward for good work. Okay. I'm not just saying 10 minutes of free play on your on your device. No. Okay. But a Kahoot quiz a scavenger hunt, a virtual tour, okay? You could even, uh, you know, do virtual tours each week a different place. You could even let the students vote where they want to go on their next virtual tour because, to be honest, you'd probably find one, okay? I would say, you know, generally they're going to be best kept in pockets or bags if you're doing things from the book or whatever, okay? I sort of brainstormed this myself and I thought, here's some ground rules we could have for using phones in the classroom. Please, if you think of any more, put them in the chat. Okay? But I think uh, most importantly, they're only using the phones for the task at hand. Okay? So while you're letting them use it, they're not using social media messages or taking photos during the task. Taking photos may be something that you do, but not if it's not part of the activity. Okay? They should be visible and available to be viewed by the teacher at any time during the task. That is, you need to be a little suspicious if a student is hiding his mobile as you walk past. Okay? I think you've got to make these ground rules that students maybe keep them on their desk okay? or at least you know, are not hiding them from anyone else. Okay? They're kept on silent. Okay? Unless, for example, like last webinar, you're doing something about music. Okay? But I think the, a lot of these things have uh, media that pops up. Okay? It might be best to keep them on silent or at least uh, people could possibly use their AirPods or whatever they have okay? if they need to. Okay? A lot of students will have them anyway. Okay? Um, also, they should really only be used in tasks where you've agreed to their use. So if you're doing a normal test, obviously you don't want students using dictionaries and things like that. Okay? So I think uh, any time you use devices, it's got to be made clear to the students that this is a task with devices. It doesn't mean other tasks we can do with device. That you're not opening the door okay, to let them do it whenever they want. Okay? One last thing I have to say, but I really want to say, is that MLA is on social media and uh, we've got a lot of short instructional videos about vocabulary. There's more all the time where in fact uh, we're really looking at expanding our social media particularly in Snapchat and Instagram okay um, so you know I'm sure most of you are like me and have heard of Snapchat and TikTok okay um, in fact sorry uh, that might have should have been uh, TikTok not Snapchat okay but uh, you know it's probably a foreign world to you as it is to me but um, the students will find uh, every week or so, and probably more frequently in the future, we're going to have little things where people talk about uh, things in English, give you some vocabulary, some idioms. I mean, I even did a few okay, in the past, okay, um, giving some ideas about English. So if you go to the Instagram page, you'll probably see me there too. Okay, But, uh, you know, don't judge all of MLA's output by you know, the, the videos I made. Yeah. Well, Josh, this was another great webinar and I wanna thank you so much for, for sharing this wonderful information with us. Um, before he finishes up with the suggestions and to remind you that we're gonna be sending out the worksheets and the links to this, I, I just wanna take another minute just to address the fact that I think, you know, a lot of times 
Um, there can be resistance sometimes with, with new things that are coming abroad. But if we really as educators take the time to meet our students where they are, and what I mean by that is, you know, instead of resisting technology and smartphones, if we can find creative ways to embrace them and do it in a controlled manner, I think that we can really earn the students respect and, and they can know that we're really trying to, to teach them using methods that they relate to. And I think that that can really make for a great classroom environment and hopefully fun too, for both you, the teacher, and also the students who are engaged. So thanks again for another great webinar full of amazing uh, lesson plans and tips and tricks. and. Look forward to sharing that all with our teachers who were able to join us today. Yeah, well, thank you, everyone, too, who uh, participated. Okay, thanks for participating in the quiz, whether you were on Kahoot or whether you were joining us in the chat. Okay, um, <laughs> someone thank you for fourth place. Okay, um, and thank you particularly for Carson, who uh, came in at short notice when uh, Cassandra was not able to do it. Okay. Please remember you'll receive a certificate of participation and the hand handout, which should have the worksheets on it. Okay? See you again in two weeks. Okay? Um, uh, we haven't got the topic yet, but uh, quite soon you'll find it on the website. And uh, I really hope you enjoy and uh, uh, join us there. And then I think in two weeks, in two weeks after that, um, so in four weeks, we actually have a one on fantasy and Harry Potter which should be really interesting um, with our MLA blogger, Francesca. Okay? Celebrating Thanks the 20th lot. anniversary of Harry Potter. So yeah, that's going to be a great webinar. That's in four weeks' time. So Are you Mark, trying to make us feel old, Carson? Is that what you're yeah. trying to do with the iPhones <laughs> and Harry Potter? Okay. <laughs> well, you're working. Okay. Well, thanks again, everybody, for joining us. It's a pleasure to be presenting this on behalf of MLA Move Language Ahead. Come see us on social media, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and we hope to see you in two weeks' time for our next webinar. Take care, everybody. Yep. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.